Hey, what is up, everyone? Killian and Flo here, and our semi-special guest, Suzumiya, uh, bringing you the ninth Everything Terra podcast. This week, we're going to be talking about the current meta of PvP, the new wolf mounts that are going to be coming out, as well as the introduction of a new accessory as well, uh, being a PvP trinket. So this is going to be a pretty centric around PvP and whatnot, and if my if I happen to cough or anything like that, sorry, I'm sick today, guys, but I still bring it out for you. For those of you who don't know who I am, my name's Kilrian. I have um, a lot of tarot-related content on YouTube, being guides for PvE, PvP, gold making, and things along those lines, as well as a Berserker PvP guide on uh, Terra Today, which is easily your best source of K-Terra news, or just Terra news in general. And my name is Flo, I'm, a, I'm an active MMO streamer, I actually have been, I usually participate in a lot of competitive CV3, and just being really involved in the PvP community uh, amongst Terra. Uh, I have uh, my own my own written Slayer guide on Terra today, and also I do uh, occasionally upload like uh, just kind of like PvP highlights or anything relating to Champion Skyring on my YouTube channel. Uh, if you like to see that, then you know just just hit it up. And uh, yeah, so what were we talking about today, Kieran? Today, once again, like I said, we are going to be talking about just the overall meta of PvP. And one thing I forgot to mention is the upcoming patch, that's with the Reaper patch actually, that's going to be hitting us in May, is going to bring about a new uh, stacking auto attack buff. Uh, but we'll talk about that a little bit later. Right now I want to talk about the, what the current meta of PvP is. You know, a lot of people since the equalized... Um, solo queue with champion skyrim where 3v3 has come in a lot of people are looking to start getting into all of that and whatnot and especially if they're looking to do it with their friends they're going to wonder what compositions are typically best you know every there's always cookie cutter out there and that's kind of what i want to go over a bit today um everyone knows pretty much the current meta for all the experienced players is very setup oriented and what setup means is having a certain class, cough, cough, a lancer with their giga chain skill, utilizing that, just bringing everyone in, and then if you have a good follow up, such as like an archer or sorcerer, able to just cheese people down with their just full extensive damage combo combos. What do you think about the meta right now, Flo? Well, the current, uh, like as you were saying, the current meta is based upon play by play, and even though like right now, like, like. We all know it. The strongest class in the game is by far Lancer. Lancer is going to be involved in a lot of the 3v3 scene. Uh, any any team that happens to be up there, really high up in the in the ladder, is most likely going to have a Lancer with them. And because of that, it's kind of, in a way, it does make the um, the skill curve kind of a little a lot lower than it should be. But at the same time, it's like even though Lancers are most likely going to be involved in these in the in the players being at the top, that doesn't mean that every game is going to be won with a Lancer. But the majority of them is, and it will continue to be so since, you know, the, the presence that a Lancer puts in, in Champion Skyring is, is humongous. And just kind of like, when you play against a Lancer, you automatically have to play a certain way to deal with them, like no matter, in yeah. comparison to other classes. Yeah, but at the same time, we've been seeing some some of the lower end classes come come out of the woodworks, like Berserker, for example. A lot of people are starting to roll that and really find how that class works. So as far as as far as it saying breaking the meta uh, is a popular saying, but I don't think it's doing that right now. I think it, the meta is just finally starting to change off of that that very setup oriented composition. Um, being a setup oriented one. You know, you're going to have the Giga Chain into an Archer, Double Kick, Stun Trap, Rain of Arrows, another Stun Trap into, I believe, Wallop. Pretty much just an entire uh, skill chain which will one-shot your entire group. But at the same time, one thing that, that we have to note about, though we call it cheese, it's still... It's easier to set up with a Lancer, but it still requires good setup. Especially if you're not playing with that kind, with a Lancer. Let's say Warrior Sorcerer, for example... Which, though the setup is presented, I think that I think that the current meta is puts a lot of emphasis on heavy crowd control and heavy setup, which is it it shows how well players play together in the end. You like you see synergy shining through because if you don't have synergy in this current meta, you're done for. Yeah. What like what what experience do you have as far as like synergizing with other classes? Well, like from what I've seen and from what 
In the majority of the ways 3v3 is won, it's one player sets up one play, the next player goes on, on top of that. Like, for example, avoiding running Warrior Slayer. The warrior comes in, he backstabs, and then I come in, and I burst, and then I hit my stun, and then he bursts after, and usually people die. It usually will, it, it will stay like that regardless, and not only that, but like, the chances of solos is not as high right now, like, with the way... With since like the stun fix and all that stuff, and I also I I feel like the meta is really like understood right now with mm -hmm. um with all the with all the players right now. Ever since like um, Nmas hosted their three v three tournament, a lot of people have a general understanding of what are the classes to be playing right now, what are the classes we're going to be seeing in three v three, and you know what they think is going to be like a strong or a weak class in three v three, and so it's just like um. I feel like at the same time, when we, if we're thinking about change or any of that with the meta, it's not really going to change as much. But there will be things coming in, in and out. So until until we get the new gear, of course. So yeah, moving just kind of progressing onto that with the new gear coming out. Um, do you expect to see a difference in classes? I know you were definitely talking about berserkers, like with the with the additional stat roll that we're going to be having. What do, you, well, what do you think is going to come about? When we think about the next gear change, what the next gear change offers from what the statistics were shown, like after I like thinking, putting it all up, it was like 30 more power, 20 something more endurance, uh, crit resist actually being involved, enough crit rate to actually like scale, and more importantly, each of the rings is giving attack speed now, so you're going to have another 5 speed, which is, from, when we transitioned from VM1 to VM2, it was 4.5, and when we're transitioning from VM2 to VM3, it's going to be another 4.5 or 5% attack speed. So that can change since we're stacking that alongside, um, you know, the whole combat, like a uh, combo attack, um, like system that's going to be implemented, which we'll also be talking about today. So Definitely. Because, you know, what we see players, when new gear comes out and new attack, uh, and attack speed increases, you see a lot more players start doing much, much fancier things. When, when I first started playing Berserker, uh, it was that one-shot heavy and whatnot uh, sort of a thing. But now that we've had the Mocking Shot increase as well as... Or the mo Mocking Shot increase duration, as well as like Tenacity, Stun, and whatnot. And then just gear giving us attack speed. You're seeing a lot more harassment playstyle. And then one thing I really wanted to point out was Warriors. Whenever they got attack speed, you ended up seeing... Instead of Warriors just being literally... Backstab, Cascade, Pounce, Rain of Blows, Reaping Slash. They're able to start doing things such as Death from Above, Backstab, Vortex Slash, Blade Draw, Cascade. Like, condensing that huge amount of damage um, into into such a small time period because of the attack speed increase that we've seen. So, I, I'm really looking forward to how, how this 5 attack speed from those rings is going to be affecting it. Do you, do you have any idea of what you're going to be doing with it um, for your Slayer? For when I... Okay, well, in terms of my Slayer, like, it's just kind of when I explained Slayer and I explained um, just uh, things in general, um, is you're going to see a lot more consistency. So what it means is that you're going to see, you know, like uh, an Archer combo going to be laid out a lot easier. You're going to see a Lancer combo going a lot easier. And ever since the Sunfix actually got re-implemented, You've been seeing people randomly getting out, like you know, like mm, oh, mm. oh, I walk out barely out of a rain of arrows combo from an archer. Yeah. Those are more likely to land, so th those are going to be, it's going to be a lot more dangerous. That's 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 how my honest opinion is. With, for me as a slayer, that five attack speed means that I am more likely going to land my measured slice after my kick combo. I am more likely going to land my measured slice after my backhand combo. Like th like. One of the biggest problems playing as a Slayer right now is the fact that my measure slice are, is RNG. Mm -hmm. With um, with the stuns being, you know, like RNG. Like either 1 to 3, three to seconds on my kick or half a second to 1.5 seconds on my backhand. So with that extra 5 speed, it's kind of leaning a lot more towards my direction. So Yeah, yeah. I think with classes that are, are setup oriented um, or at least chain skill oriented, much like the Slayer, it's going to... It's like you said, it's going to lock down the ability to pull off those chains smoother. Which which is going to... You'll probably notice just an a overall increase in how effective you are in PvP. Just because things are going to be landing a lot easier. 
for a five speed increase for berserker means that i'm going to be able to actually combo attack and skirmish a lot better which is really really huge um as it sits right now as a Zerker, at least from my personal experience with them, um, whenever you start skirmishing, if you don't block at a perfect time against, let's say, a Lancer, a Slayer, a Warrior, if you don't block at the perfect time when they use a certain skill a certain way, then you're not going to have enough time to counteract and fight them because then their next ability is coming through right after. So with this attack speed increase, I'm going to be able to skirmish people a little bit more and hopefully peel myself more to allow myself to actually make those bigger plays actually get those big charge ups off so i'm really looking forward to the overall the overall increase uh moving on just since we were on the topic about attack speed in the reaper patch that's coming to the u.s in may they're going to be implementing a stacking auto attacking system what this means is after a certain amount of auto attacks from each individual class um you gain a, a certain buff let me pull up the exact numbers. Oh, no. Let me pull up the exact numbers real quick. So, I know for a fact, Berserkers, once you attack, auto attack, this is your basic combo attack, four times within 10 seconds, you're going to be getting a 20% increase in charging on your next skill. Um, so that's a pretty huge thing. Could you go over the other ones, Flo? Um, okay, well, before, like, we continue, you have, to, you have to understand that, um, it's, even though it is, um, four, landing four combo attacks in ten seconds, every time that you land a combo attack successfully, you'll get a buff on yourself. It'll say one, and that means that once, and then we have ten seconds to get the next stack, the next stack, and once you've hit the fourth stack, that means that you'll be, then you'll have ten seconds to take advantage of that 20% mm -hmm. charge speed. With other classes, such as archers, they land ten consecutive combo attacks and they'll get 20% on speed on their penetrating arrow. Uh, for Slayers, when they land 4 successful combo attacks, they'll get 20% speed on their Whirlwind. For Lancers, when they get 8 consecutive combo attacks, they'll get 20% speed on their Shield Barrage. Uh, mm -hmm. For Warriors, when they land 14 consecutive combo attacks, they'll get 20% attack speed for 10 seconds. And then... Um, I believe that's everything in terms of combo attack. The other classes don't get that combo attack thing. You you can't say consecutive, though, because there's going to be a duration in which, like, for a Berserker myself, I'm going to be able to auto-attack block, auto-attack block. So it's not purely consecutive. Yeah. It's going to be, you know, if you land a hit and then you refresh it within the dura before the duration of those stacks falls off of you. Yeah. So, so note that it is not consecutive. So, this is going to open a lot of opportunities for people. Um, you know, if I get four auto attacks off on a... <clears throat> let's say... So, 20% attack speed or charging speed on my next skill. As a Berserker. If I get those four auto attacks in, and I'm not fully sure if this is exactly how it's going to work, but this is just kind of a speculation of mine. Four auto attacks in, staggering out a healer. I then lead that into a staggering strike, flatten. That's going to KD them, and then I'm going to have a insane charging speed increase for my upcoming Thunderstrike. Things along those lines are going to be huge if utilized properly. Um, you know, I, I think a lot of people are going to be finding... It, it adds a whole other level of intricacy to figure out how to weave characters... That's what I. That's what I've been. I like about the idea of the attack speed increase, um, the stacking attack speed increase, is it's going to give players a okay. I've stacked it up this many times. Okay, I know if I know for a fact. Uh, you flow do a lot of research, a lot of practice, a lot of just playing around with with your mechanics as a as a player. So for a slayer, you finding okay, I got 20 attack speed on this next thing, or, or wh whichever your stacking buff is, then, the yeah, the whirlwind. So you're going to be able to chain different abilities on that. You know what I mean? Yeah. You'll be able to come out with new insane combos, which just adds on to the, the awesome feel of real action combat that Terra offers. Do you, think, do you think that this is going to be a big change in PvE, though? Uh, for I feel like certain some of the changes that they've added with that combo attacking is going to affect PVE a lot more. Like, 
eight consecutive combo attacks on Lancer is not a big deal. Like, let's face it, like, shield barraging is already fast enough as is. So that's going to be something for PvE. Ten consecutive auto attacks on Archer, or ten, ten combo attacks, but, uh, stacks on Archer to get 20% Panero. I feel like that's also going to be PvE since Archers have, like, you know, that whole mana mm -hmm. issue in PvE. So that's definitely going to be there. And I can definitely see all, like, what... What I've noticed, at least from playing this game and from being involved in every patch so far that's hit that's hit the U.S. or at the NA tier scene, is that for every PvP change that Blue Hole has done and brings it over, has made PvE a lot better experience. So because of that, like for example, the not being able to get knocked down so far when hitting my whirlwind or my knockdown strike skills, like and my heart thrust, like I I don't get knocked down on certain yeah. attacks like against queen right against uh, Manai's core like she tails me i can hard thrust and it'll it'll hit me the whole time and i'll just keep going like those changes and whenever it is a pvp change this it's definitely going to make pve a lot easier but you know of course uh blue holes already did, like made something around that you know with the yeah. whole new dungeon being really hard so it's definitely going to be a lot more fun and something you're going to have to be aware of constantly mm -hmm. so that's just going to make you better at your class because like when you have to pay attention to that thing so which is exactly what you know every game needs to do it needs to offer <clears throat> sorry it needs to offer basically content it needs to offer changes which give the opportunity the player to utilize it properly and skill up because if the base level of skill in the game goes up it gives the producers and the content creators so much more to work with you know, to create harder heart and harder content, especially, you know, after the piss poor performance we saw in, with Wonderholm, you know, and they heard the pleas of, oh, we went into hard instance. If they see everybody <clears throat> rallying and clearing this new hard content, they're going to say, OK, we know what we can work with now. And so just adding more con adding, adding more content as well as adding more mechanics to a player, like you said, will just increase the over overall skill level. So I'm really, really looking forward to just seeing how how well the game develops around these these upcoming changes that are gonna be coming around. Let's uh let's move on a little bit about that, uh, off of that, which we've talked about the attack speed change, we've talked about the PvP meta, and just kind of are going around the fairly pvp oriented focus that this uh the Ter everything terror podcast number nine has they're going to be introducing a pvp trinket for those of you who don't know what a pvp trinket is if you ever played something along the lines of world of warcraft or i believe guild wars has one um pretty much every major pvp mmo has a pvp trinket this is an item which will let you get out of stuns, sleeps, CC effects, crowd control effects, um, on demand. On demand, but it's an item that has a high cooldown. This one being a three minute one for Terra. What do you think that this is going to do to the game flow? It's going to definitely um, help you recover. Like, what, what the point thing is that, it, like, it's going to be really major in 3v3 because in 3v3, a match is around the six minutes you have a you have a skill or you have a trinket that lets you recover that la that has a three minute cd that means you have one chance probably to be able to pull something uh like at least be able to get yourself out of a really sticky situation and then because and also like i believe this trinket is also going to be working in like um in an, an open world setting as well so like people that are running around in alliance and all that stuff and they have to deal with all the Observed. tons of people like <laughs> coming in like at least, at least you'll be able to get out when you think that you're in trouble like a self cleanse is nice uh, I like that that is being added to the game and you know like sometimes like I, I love healers but you know they're not gonna cleanse me so I have something for myself and you know what sometimes healers they don't have anyone to wake themselves up so they can wake themselves up with that hmm. trinket so it's definitely nice I think what that's gonna force the community to do as well is it's going to make players really start thinking about like when they should use this item as well as it's going to force teams to have to play better and set up cuz a lot of time uh, a lot of time groups cannot typical cheese comps are only able to get that one good cheese off and and land the kill hope hope to land the kill 
this trinket edition is not going to let them rely on that one time. They're going to have to raise their skill and consistently pull off these kinds of combos. It's going to change everything. Um, like one of the one of the most damaging things about playing a non lancer comp and fighting a lancer is the fact that. They don't always have to open up with the Giga Chain. They can wait till you make the play and then they Giga Chain. Imagine if you had that trinket when you were when you were chasing down their healer and they're low and you're getting harassed by their lancer and he tries to do that defensive Giga Chain, aka as a lot of people know right now, the peel fair strategy where they try to screw you over. You can just be like, you know what, man? Like I don't wanna get pulled right now. Let me just self cleanse myself, keep doing what I'm doing, maybe you'll finish the game. It'll be really clutch. Those like being able to time that trinket is just going to make a lot more clutch plays happen. It's going to let you be able to not deal with the bullshit that can potentially happen when you're doing when you're doing any sort of mm-hmm. PvP. Mm-hmm. And it's just kind of like, but at the same time, it's like when you when you carelessly use it, and like you're not going to have it when it matters most. And that's exactly. going to like that. Then you're going to be like, man, I sure wish you know I had that trinket up. But it's I I I really can't tell whether it's going to make the PvP experience better or make it less better. That's something for me to still decide since I also don't want to get self cleansed when I make yeah. my play too. So, as as a person who came from uh, many years of WoW, um, that which has had a PvP trink in essence from the very beginning, it's it's a very it, I think it makes players kind of alter alter their way of playing the game and alter the way that they're playing against certain classes, and it's like you said. If I think when a PvP trinket is first implemented into Terra, if there are people who don't have experience with a PvP trinket <clears throat> in the game, then they're going to be popping that. They're just going to trigger happy it. You know, it's like oh, the Mystic. Let's say let's say I, I knock down a Mystic and then they jaunt away and then they stun ball me. I know that I'm not going to land that kill on that Mystic if I trinket right there. But I, th- I bet a lot of people are going to be very trigger happy with it. And it's going to be a, definitely a huge learning process. Um, and it's going to be one another thing that we're going to have to keep track of. With it being a three minute cooldown, you don't really keep track of cooldowns that long in Terra. You know what I mean? The yeah. main thing that you look for is, sure, a priest five minute. You know, you're going to see that once a game or once a match. And that's what you can expect. Other than that, you're going to be seeing a Giga Chain every one minute. You know, there's there's a huge difference between this item, which can potentially be seen twice in a match, versus the Giga Chain you'll see five times a match, or just the one time you'll be seeing a Divine Resp- or five minute Priest five minute coming out. So it's another thing that people are are going to have to adjust to and really keep that internal timer of, of what's coming up, you know what I mean? And it's going it's gonna open up like you said, if you can stop the defensive gigas and the defensive plays coming out from another team to try and stop you from killing their healer and you held on to that trinket, you're gonna be able to just make the play regardless, um, in comparison to like let's say you stun up a healer and then all of a sudden he pops a trinket earlier. You know that's on cooldown, and that's when you know you have the time to go hard. And if yeah. your PvP trinket's gets up and available, then you're going to be the one who's actually who's actually ready to counteract those peels that are going to be coming in. I get rain of arrows, and I go in insta fucking fight everyone mode <laughs> out in Velka outskirts. I'm surprised we haven't been killed yet. That's surprising. But yeah, overall, I personally think the PvP trinket is going to be an excellent addition to the game. And I, I really look forward to it. What are your final thoughts on it? I think that with the Trinket, it's going to make teams that don't have a Lancer have a harder time. Like, for example, when you're running a complex Slayer Sork, the amount of plays that you get off is very minimal in comparison to a Lancer having Giga Chain every minute. So, I mean, sure, I'll, I'll stop it for that one minute, but I'm going to have to deal with it in the next minute, right? Whereas my plays are, how, how often am I going to get my plays off? And when I finally get that opportunity, it's going to suck. So it's going to make, with that being implemented, I feel like it'll make, it'll force players to be able to, look, will have to play better in order to get things mm. done. Like, you're going to have to be able to make yourself more opportunities because if you're always going to rely on that one opportunity to try to get something done, it's going to get immediately diminished. Yeah. So in, my, in the end, I think it's going to be a great, a great change because 
it's better to have that than to not have that in my opinion because everyone everyone has felt how things were like before the stun fixes too like you're stuck yeah. there and you're completely demolished before they fix that stun like there's nothing you can do it gives you that that feeling of helplessness and it doesn't make the game fun like with this trinket it's gonna make the game a lot more fun because at least you'll have that opportunity to be able to to get that thing off you know so yeah yeah i i look forward to it because like you said it's gonna be it's gonna force players to increase their skill that it's going to be daunting to some some of the newer players coming into it, but all the veteran players and all the people who are wanting to get better, it's going to be another thing that you have to watch out for and be ready for. And I think that in hardship, people are going to play better and do better. You know, that's just that's just how we step up. That's how we increase our skill. All right, <clears throat> finishing up the whole pvp oriented aspect of uh, this podcast i just wanted to kind of end on a little bit of a lighter note uh just being a couple of the new mounts that are going to be coming out we saw uh tonka on friday talking about the new wolf mounts that are going to be coming out uh to the emp store of course you know if you want to drop some dollar bills you can get it right away or if you happen to be a good gold maker in terra you can always buy that from an emp seller because you can always find one what what do you think of the addition of the new the new mounts they're cool. <laughs> it has that anime feel, and uh, I'm probably gonna guy like all buy all of them because they're all robot dogs. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why. I uh, even though like like I I don't know like I still like I still enjoy playing Terra, and it's it is sort of worth it to throw money at this game, and it's pretty fun to like this game has always been the whole aesthetic feel and so you're always gonna bound to throw money to make yourself look better every character in the game probably has a costume item on so yeah it's just like yeah i'm definitely gonna get one for sure especially with the ticket implementation yeah um <clears throat> what do you think yeah you know, just to kind of revolve around the implementation of new mounts and things like that what do you think of just emp in general emp like, yeah like what do you think of a cash shop in the game i think but it's very misleading. I think that, like, uh, with the whole, like, loot box and all that stuff, I ask myself, why is there not a T-coin, the, the T-coin system that they have in KTA right now? Like, why can't players in a free-to-play setting be able to earn gold and kind of, you know, buy cash up items with the gold that they earn? Like, that's, uh, I think that EMP, as, as much as they make it sound cheap, it actually is very... I don't know. I feel I feel manipulated when I buy EMP. Like it's like it's like buying it's like buying R, like RP in League of Legends. Like it's like oh it's cheap now. Like you know like the whole loot boxing is cheap, and then you end up throwing more money at it. I feel like you're, you're kind of getting sucked in. It's like buying skins on League of Legends. The worst. I don't, I don't know. What do you think about EMP? I I mean I personally think that what Terra offers outside of EMP is it's the entire game. You know, it's it's easily a complete free to play game, but if you do want those aesthetics, like you said, it's that very anime esque, very you know, um, Eastern MMO basically of feel to it with with the aesthetics. You know, especially with us using goddamn ninja costumes right now. Um, all of us, if you're willing to throw a little bit of money on there, it helps the provide the provider, which. I personally think InMass does a pretty damn good job with, with what they've offered us and brought about to the game. Um, I think having just EMP in the game is not a bad addition. It's not bad by any means, and it's not pay to win. So EMP, I think, is, is it's acceptable. It is a little expensive, I agree, but any player can purchase literally anything. No, I can't get away from the, the name horse. Uh, <laughs> any player who spends their time in the game and makes enough gold can buy anything from EMP because that that's how I've gotten a lot of my stuff personally is just through gold. Yeah. So for the most part, I think I think EMP is it's pretty valid. I think I think the free the free to play aspect of Terra easily easily overrides the cash shop. And it, because it's not pay to win, it's pay for aesthetics and it's pay for convenience. That's what I think. Also, I think that EMP is just going to be a lot more ridiculous since I don't know if you've seen the new gear BM3 in general, but like 
Blue Hole has this whole ploy where they made BM3 outfits don't look as good to try to convince people to use their whole new ticket system and to convince people to use their new T-coin system, or not their new t like to use the T-coin system and to buy more costumes that they happen to be taking from j -Terra. Like they're like making, they're like making uh, their own skins or their own like <laughs> outfits in j -Terra. And then k is like, all right, cool, we'll take those. <laughs> we'll take advantage of your the money you're spending and then we'll try to make money over here. So... It's just kind of like... Hey, that's a business model. Yeah, man. exactly. It's, it's all business in the end, you know what I mean? But they're offering a quality game, so it's always good. Well, I think that's going to be it for the Everything Terra podcast number nine, guys. Hopefully you all enjoyed it. Um, if you want to check out some of my content, you can always go to youtube.com slash Um Once again, PvE guides, a little bit of PvP guides, as well as gold-making guides for all the new players and veteran players of Terra. As well as check out uh, pretty much kind of our semi-sponsor, Terra Today. If you're looking for any news, literally any news about Terra, you're going to find it there. Including K-Terra News, where you're going to find pretty much nowhere else. <laughs> also, uh, if you want to check out any of my content, well, um, you can see me at twitch.tv slash I try to uh, stream on a daily basis when I can, a daily or bi-daily basis so if you want to see any sort of gaming you can check it out there I have a lot of my videos and such on youtube.com slash as well anything in terms of 3v3 pvp oriented stuff as well as me starting up my own little projects um, such as you know a lot of people have been asking me for like pvp tutorials and all that jazz and you know my cool little highlight reel so you can check it out there as well um, other than that, um, yeah, that's pretty much it. <laughs> One thing I'd like to ask everyone to do is to go onto Twitter. If you're not a Twitter person, that's fine. Please create an account, though. And using the hashtag EverythingTerra, so hashtag EverythingTerra, submit questions and topics that you would like us to talk about. Um, it's, it's pretty rare that we actually get questions submitted to us, and I try my best, or we try our best to answer them. Uh, whether it be on the podcast or post post podcast, um, which is streamed live, pretty much yeah, we just want topics submitted by the community. Or hell, if you if you're an artist and you submit some art, Terra art, tweet it with the hashtag Everything Terra. We'd love to expand what we talk about and give appropriate pre appreciation to the co the content creators of Terra. Um, I have people like hesitant to show me media. Like they were like, "Well, you know, I have a video, but I'm not sure if I should show you. Like, I'm not that good. Should I try to record footage and show you?" I'm like, "Yeah, like just you know, show me something cool. Um, you know, if you don't want to make a Twitter account, as much as we would prefer to see it there, since it's you know, I pretty much open my Twitter all the time. You can, remember, you can drop us questions on our inboxes as well, like Twitch TV slash Curian, Twitch TV slash Four. You can drop it off there." Or you can even throw it on. We we even have Facebook pages too. Like we <laughs> just ask us questions there. The more, like the whole point of the podcast is to try to help the community. And if you don't have any questions, like but yet you want help, it's kind of like we want to really bridge that gap. You know what I'm <laughs> saying? And that would definitely help us to provide more content and such on our podcast. So, all right. Yeah. Any final words from Susamia, our <laughs> special guest, who <laughs> said a not a single thing? <laughs> or is he too busy with uh, what's it called Diablo three? He's too busy with D three. Look at him. He's just kind of staring at the screen. All right, guys. Thank you all for watching. Hopefully, you enjoyed the podcast. Make sure to tune in next week. We do it every single Saturday, even when I'm sick, even when I when Flo's dying. Doesn't matter. We're we're going to be showing it every single week. Make sure to submit your topics with hashtag Everything Terra. Thanks for watching, guys. And peace out. Catch you guys later.